Hi everyone, this is the last video of this series, the location of roots of a quadratic equation. I have already created five separate videos on the five different situations and this is the sixth one and the last one of this series. In this video, we are going to discuss about the necessary conditions for two real numbers to be between the two roots of a quadratic equation. Let's suppose we have a quadratic equation like this, ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. Then we can assume that the quadratic function f of x is equal to ax squared plus bx plus plus c and for this quadratic equation we have to find out what are the necessary conditions for which two real numbers k sub 1 and k sub 2 will be between the two roots which are alpha and beta assuming alpha is less than beta right so here i have two diagrams one diagram is for the situation when leading coefficient is positive and the second diagram is for leading coefficient is negative now let's try to plot the two real numbers k sub 1 and k sub 2 on the first diagram i have have denoted the two points with two red dots there the diagram is kind of small but please assume that the first red dot on the positive x-axis which is inside the parabola there right on the x-axis but inside the parabola there the first red dot please assume that that is k sub 1 comma 0 that's the first point which is the k sub 1 and the second red dot let's assume that it is k sub 2 comma 0 that means that second red dot is for the real number k sub 2 now in both the cases you see that the function value as long as k sub 1 or k sub 2 there within the parabola the function value will be negative you see that the yellow dotted line there and it meets the function wherever it meets it's actually that value is negative right it's below the x-axis and if we plot the two points in the second diagram then they're going to look like this in the second diagram also please assume that the first red dot is for k sub 1 so I'm just simply going to write it like this let me say this is k sub 1 meaning the point is not k sub 1 it's actually the number on the real number line right so that is k sub 1 and the second one is k sub 2 and if you want to denote that in form of coordinate it would be k sub 1 comma 0 and k sub 2 comma 0 similarly in the first diagram also let me denote it like this so k sub 1 and the other one is k sub 2 those are the two numbers right now in the second diagram as you can see if k sub 1 is inside the parabola or k sub 2 is inside the parabola then the value of the function at that point is actually positive because it's above the positive x-axis it's not below the x-axis it's above the x-axis so the function value is positive when the leading coefficient is negative but here when the leading coefficient is positive the function value is negative and in this case we have to ensure that k sub 1 and k sub 2 they both are within the parabola they cannot be outside the parabola they have to be inside the parabola so that they will be between the two roots of this quadratic equation right so then to guarantee that they will be inside the parabola we can use this condition that the product of the leading coefficient and the function value at that point that product will be negative because you see in the first case you see the leading coefficient is positive but the function value is negative whereas in the second situation the leading coefficient is negative but the function value is positive so if we take their product like this if we say well if the leading coefficient times the function value at k sub 1 this product will be negative as long as k sub 1 is inside the parabola similarly we can say the leading coefficient times the function value at k sub 2 this product will also be negative as long as k sub 2 is inside the parabola and those are the only necessary conditions to make sure that k sub 1 and k sub 2 are between alpha and and beta so we have already obtained the necessary conditions in this case also we really don't have to worry about the discriminant because if we take this product and this product is negative that means the number k sub 1 or the number k sub 2 they are inside the parabola and that is possible only when the parabola cuts the x-axis if the parabola touches the x-axis or goes above the x-axis it will never be possible meaning the product of the leading coefficient and the function value becoming negative is possible only when when the point is inside the parabola meaning wherever we are calculating the function value that f of k sub 1 that k sub 1 has to be inside the parabola then only this product can be negative otherwise it can never be negative so just using these two conditions we can guarantee two things that yes the quadratic equation will have two real roots and of course the numbers k sub 1 and k sub 2 will be between the two real roots so let's take an example 
So in this example, we have a quadratic equation which is x squared plus p minus 5 times x minus 5 times p equals 0. And the question says for what values of p, one root will be smaller than 2 and the other root will be greater than 4. So in this case, you can clearly see that k sub 1 is actually 2. So 2 is nothing but k sub 1. I'm going to write it right here. So k sub 1, that is the 2 and 4 is actually k sub 2. And we have to find out the set of values of p for which 2 and 4 they will be between the two roots of this quadratic equation. So let's try to solve this problem. Now if the quadratic equation is x squared plus p minus 5 times x minus 5 times p equals 0 then can we assume that our quadratic function can we write it like this then f of x which is our quadratic function that will be x squared plus p minus 5 times x minus 5 times p and then what are our necessary conditions? Well our conditions are like this the leading coefficient times f of k sub 1 this product has to be less than 0 and the other condition is like this the leading coefficient times f of k sub 2 this product also has to be less than 0. Now let's try to evaluate each one of them. So from the first one what do we get? Well from this one right here from this one we get that what is a? Well a is actually 1 in this case so we will say 1 times f of what is k sub 1? Well k sub 1 is actually positive 2 this product has to be less than 0 and if we solve it a little bit what is f of 2 well f of 2 would be 2 squared plus p minus 5 times x so that would be p minus 5 times 2 minus 5 times p this will be less than 0 I simply ignored the 1 times or 1 multiplied by f of 2 now if we solve it a little further we are going to get 4 plus 2 times p minus 10 minus 5 times p is less than 0 and from here what do we get? We get negative 3 times p and then negative 6 this is less than 0 and from here we can say well then 3 times p plus 6 will be greater than 0. We simply multiplied both sides by a negative 1 the inequality sign flipped and then from here if we divide both sides by 3 we are going to get p plus 2 that would be greater than 0 and from here we get p greater than negative 2 and also you can say that p would belong to this range negative 2 to positive infinity that is p greater than negative 2 right. So that is our first solution set. Now we also have have to solve the second condition right. So let's try to solve the second condition. So for the second condition what do we get? We get again 1 times f of what is our k sub 2 in this case? Well k sub 2 was 4 so 1 times f of 4 this has to be less than 0. So from here what do we get? We get 4 squared plus p minus 5 times 4 minus 5 times p that is less than 0 and then from here what do we get? We get 16 plus 4 times p minus 20 minus 5 times p all of that is less than 0 and from here this is looking like negative p and negative 4 less than 0 and from here we can say well if we multiply both sides by a negative 1 then this will be p plus 4 the inequality sign will flip so this will be greater than 0 and then from here we can say that p is greater than negative 4 and also we can say using the interval notation we can say p would belong to the range negative 4 through positive infinity. So we have the two sets of solutions from the two conditions now we have to take an intersection of both the solution sets. So if you have to take the intersection let's try to plot it on a real number line. So I'm going to draw a real number line here for the first solution set what would be the range well it's actually greater than negative 2 that means if we have negative 2 right here let's try to plot negative 2 right here let's suppose this is our negative 2 so it will be greater than negative 2 so let's do a hollow circle around here and then I'm going to indicate with a pink line here pink dotted line so this is that range which is greater than negative 2 that's the greater than negative 2 range and how about greater than negative 4 well let's assume that our negative 4 is right here and then greater than negative 4 would be something like this let me use a green color here so I'm again going to do the hollow circle because these are strictly greater than negative 4 or strictly greater than negative 2. So the solution sets don't include the boundary values here right. So then for greater than negative 4 it will be kind of like this. It will be the range of numbers this way I am using the green dotted line and we have to take the common portion. Now what is the common portion? As you can see the common zone would be like this zone right here excluding the negative 2 but it will be from negative 2 all the way to positive infinity that will be the common zone for both the solution sets right because this 
this is where the overlap is i'm showing it by red oblique lines here and so this will be the overlapping zone here so that would be the common solution i'm highlighting the part of the real number line with a red line here so this red portion right here on the real number line that is the intersection of these two solution sets which is from negative 2 of course excluding negative 2 but right after negative 2 so from negative 2 all the way to positive infinity that is the common solution set so then finally our answer is that p must belong to this range so now i'm going to write the final answer here let me use a pink color maybe so p must belong to the range negative 2 through positive infinity and that is our final answer i hope everything made sense thank you for watching see you in the next video